Hi! In this video, we'll go over different methods that data can be visualized and how the data can be interpreted. So what is data visualization? It's when you use graphs, charts, images that help you visualize complex data. Here's an example. On the top is the raw data collected about temperature, rainfall, and sunlight in Great Britain. It's kind of hard to pull any useful information from these numbers, right? On the bottom, the information has been presented in a way that makes it much less difficult to make sense of the data. You can easily see the location since a map is used, and the colors represent the amount of the rain or sunshine. So why do we want to visualize data? Well, it makes it easier to understand the data, and then we're able to use information from the data when we see it in a visual form. It's much faster than reading through pages and pages of numbers. And this isn't just about maps and rainfall. Data visualization assists everywhere. It's in science, government, sports, everywhere you can see this data used. And data visualization is incredibly useful because it helps us recognize problems. Here's a visualization that displays the amount of endangered species across the United States. Your eyes are almost instantly drawn to the two locations with the highest amount of endangered species. Do you see them? You can see that Florida and then the bottom left of the U.S. contain the most endangered species. This is helpful because now we know that programs to save these species should probably focus in those areas. And data visualization has been around for centuries. You can even count maps and map creation as one of the first data visualizations. This is an example of a very early data visualization. This was created to track Napoleon's losses along his route. Now think back to this time period. See if you can actually picture Charles Joseph Menard creating this visualization. He probably had a table of values drawn out and he had to look at the value and then very carefully plot the points and make sure the distance between the points were uniform. He had to probably have a little bit of artistic talent. It had to take quite some time. There were no computers or database programs back then. It was all done by hand. In today's data visualization, we have come so far. We can process large amounts of data very quickly. We can even keep it updated so that it is current and always accurate. And then we can add interactivity as well. And this helps us blend science and art. It makes our visualizations very nice to look at. There are so many different kinds. It's not just graphs and pie charts anymore and more being created every day. Now, a lot of these visualizations seen here are, are a bit advanced. So we're going to start by looking at some of the basic, most commonly used types. Tables are great to use when you need precise data, when you actually need the number and not just the color or a comparison with another number. This table shows the train times of the train leaving San Francisco. Well, this would be something that you would definitely want precise values for so that you don't miss the train. So a table makes sense to display the data. And then the colors are used as well, which might represent different ticket costs or maybe if the train is on or off peak. So can you tell what exactly or when exactly does the earliest train leave San Francisco? See if you can find it. Yeah, it looks like it's in the top left corner at 4.55 in the morning, way early. <laughs> Pie charts are a good choice when a percentage can be useful in interpreting the data. We don't have the exact value here, but that might not be what we're trying to display. This pie chart shows how often Twitter users check their feed. If I were to ask you how many check once a day, you could use the chart to figure that out. Do you see it? It looks like about 12%. It looks like 12% of Twitter users check their Twitter once a day. So it doesn't actually matter how many users we're talking about here. Either way, 12% of that group of the Twitter group will probably check their Twitter feed once a day. A line chart is great for showing trends over time. So you can quickly compare the broadband rates for different countries. It looks like Denmark and the Netherlands have the best rate. Also, you can see the increase in the rates for each individual country. So let's see, has access to high speed internet gotten better or worse for these countries? Well, you can definitely see it's increasing. Now bar charts are great for comparing different categories. And this is actually a stacked bar chart, which offers even more information in each individual bar. Now, at first glance, you might notice that the first bar is the highest. So Ethan and Joel Cohen have the greatest number of award wins. Now, there are three colors in the bar, and if you use the key on the right, you can see that they've won awards for thrillers, dramas, and crime films. Now, what's interesting as well 
is the third bar from the left. Take a look at Steven Spielberg's bar. He may not have won as many awards, but look at all the different colors, all the different genres of film that he's won for. That's very impressive as well. So there's a lot of useful data from this visualization. A histogram is used too. This is great for showing the frequency of events. This is, this is used a lot to display scores on a test um, because the scores can be grouped together as shown. So which score range had the most students? Do you see it? Looks like it's that orange bar. And it looks like this exam was pretty tough. It looks like about 55 students scored between 50 and 60 on this exam. Which score range had the least? Well, it's the light purple all the way on the right. It's only a few students scored between 90 and 100. And when we add interactivity, it, it even adds more to the visualization. It can allow the user to narrow in on the information that they wanna know. So this interactive lets you hover over each city and it will display the population for that city. Here you can see the top three overall players or you can choose a certain skill like ball control and see the top three players in that category alone. This interactivity can engage the user and allow them to narrow in on the information that they want to know. Now having creativity in your visualization can be very helpful when interpreting the data. If you look at just the top two rows of data, it's hard to pull out anything useful about LeBron James shooting statistics. But if we place these values on an actual basketball court, it becomes very useful. If we were LeBron James, we could see where we might want to practice a bit more. And if we were the team playing against him, we now know that we probably should keep him out of the key, where it shows him shooting at 66.7%. And he definitely shoots more from the left side of the hoop. So we might want to cover him tighter when he's over there. So how are these visualizations used? Well, there are a lot of public data sets and these tools allow widespread access. So anyone can go to the Google Public Data Explorer or Gapminder and anyone can use the data to try to find patterns, find trends and recognize problems. And that is a quick overview on the different types of data visualizations that we can use.